Hello students, welcome to KGP Teachers Online. Today I am going to explain you chapter 1 of your NCRT Literature Reader Book, The Best Christmas Present in the World. Dear children, this story is set up in the backdrop of a war, the First World War. Children, in this world, people want to live with peace and harmony. Nobody wants war. Everyone dislikes it. Nobody wants fight. The same idea is depicted in this story. The author wants to state his consequences of war through the letter of a soldier's wife. Let us find out what happens in the story. I spotted it in a junk shop in Britain. A roll top desk. The author went to a junk shop. He found there a roll top desk. The man said it was early 19th century and oak. The shop owner said that the roll top desk belonged to early 19th century and it was made up of oak wood. I had wanted one, but they were far too expensive. Earlier, the author wanted such kind of a desk, but it was too expensive. So, the roll top desk at a junk shop with a less price, he wanted to buy it in a bad condition. The roll top in several pieces, one leg clumsily mended, scorch marks all down one side. He saw that the roll top desk was in a bad condition, very bad condition. It had fire marks as if it might have burnt in fire, half burnt in fire and clumsily mended. It was not mended also properly. It was going for a little money. I thought I could restore it. And I found that for a little money, I can buy it. And keep it at my home. It would be a risk, a challenge, but I had to have it. I paid the man and brought it back to my workroom. At the back of the garage, I began work on it on a Christmas Eve. The author kept it at the back of his house in the garage and he started working on that desk. I removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawers. The veneer had lifted almost everywhere. The veneer, that is the plastic cover of that roll top desk was lifted because it was worn out. He found that the condition of the drawer was not at all good. It looked like water damage to me. Both fire, water had clearly taken their toll on this desk. They very badly affected the desk. The last drawer was stuck fast. He opened easily the first two drawers, but he could not the last drawer. It was stuck fast. I tried, I could do it. Ease it out gently. In the end, I used brute force. He forcibly, forcefully, he pulled out. He stuck it sharply with the side of my fist and the drawer flew open to reveal a shallow space underneath. And what he saw? That there was a shallow space inside the drawer. And what was? There was something inside. A small black box. Cello taped to the top of it was a piece of lined notepaper. And written on it, in shaky handwriting. There was something written on that note paper. Jim's last letter. Received January 25, 1915. To be buried. With the men. When the time comes. The, the letter, the notepad said, note paper said that the letter should be buried with me. When time comes. I knew as I did it that it was wrong of me to open the box.
But curiosity got the better of my scruples. Feelings. They, came, they overcame my feelings. Though I should not have, the author should not have opened the letter. But he opened it. Out of curiosity. Inside the box, there was an envelope. He found that there was an envelope also. The address read, on which the address was written, Mrs. Jim McPherson, 12 Cooper Beaches, Bridport, Dorset. I took out the letter and unfolded it. It was written in pencil and dated at the top, December 26, 1914. The date written was of World War I. So students, here the first part ends. We found that the author went to the junk shop and brought a worn out desk from that shop. And he finds in the last drawer of that desk a letter on which the address of somebody written. So let us go through the comprehension check based on it. The first question reads, what did the author find in a junk shop? Very easy one, a roll top desk. What did he find in a secret drawer? A small black tin box, silo tabbed to the top of it was a piece of lined notepaper. Who do you think had put it in there? I suppose Mrs. Jim McPherson. Thank you.